proper Sussex bass territory this. And here it is, the lagoon. It only becomes a closed water space on the biggest of tides. And we've got a couple of days this month, a large body of water gets trapped. I'm very excited to fish it because usually the bass get stuck in here and they start to move as the water floods into it. So in effect it's like a giant rock pool. I'm going to cast some lures across and hope these bass think that they're real fish. I'm going to walk across here. I've made a mark on the rocks at low tide because I'm coming back here and the light will be poor. I want to be fishing off this little ledge here over the top of that second ledge once the tide rises about half a metre. Over this reef literally and then hopefully over that next one I'm getting out far enough. Well there are some fish here uh, just breaking the surface so I'm going to have a little look. Something going on over here. It could be mullet. Well, in amongst the sound of oyster catches, curlews here as well. There's also the sound of seals. Let's hope that they have eaten. This is a lure from uh, Bass Lures based in Cornwall. They're cheaper basically, um, but actually the hooks on these are really good. This is a DW95 118FF means floating. Uh, so we'll give this our first cast. Thanks for sending us this one. You can see it's a very calm, quiet. In already, first cast. <laughs> so only a small one about 40 centimeters but it is a bass a beautiful beautiful bass oh don't you just love them hammered that lure so in with the first cast always optimistic i thought i could see some splashes there let's cast in the same thing again see if we can find another one to tighten this drag now never know actually see out there um, little bass spikes poking out marauding just cast to an actual fish there 
Let's see if they find that interesting. Yep, yeah, it was as well. <laughs> oh, terrific. Oh, well, that one's a nice size. Let's get that unhooked. Interesting. Yeah, it was as well. <laughs> oh, that's a better, better size. That one. That is about a 48 centimeter. Look at that, lovely. <laughs> oh, the hook came out quite easily. What a lovely fish. Well, I might actually keep that one. Hey, love them. Love them. Um, I'm using 15 pound line here with a 15 pound leader. And uh, as we speak, actually there's some fish over, over there. So we'll just aim our lure out there. Let's see what we got. Might even spook them as it lands. Well, I've gone right into where the fish are here, and these aren't mullet, these are bass, I think. Come on. We've got fish moving behind us. So you're under a little bit of pressure <laughs> to get the leader on. Um, but what I do is I tie that braid onto my finger like that and then go across it with the fluorocarbon and then you're just forming like a like a loose little L shape there trying to keep all of those bits of line taut. I can tie one of these on in 30 seconds. The key is not to rush it. inside this little lagoon um, sometimes I've just pushed back like that three overhand knots but you've got to make sure that bites down on both the braid and that fluoro you sort of come down at a bit of an angle keep it nice and moist it's alright because I'm sweating <laughs> sweating because I know the fish are there. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> Both bits, don't leave them on the rocks, stick them in the stick them in the bag. Alright, that's ready to go. We'll cast that one out. I'm out there, fish. Just on the edge of that sort of margin. I will cast out as even something. We are literally in about a foot of water. So I want a surface lure now, uh, otherwise we'll keep getting snagged. But I'll send it over there, see if the fish are biting. <laughs>
I do wonder sometimes when conditions are like this, whether things like the line flash might put the bass off. I'm certainly getting more interest at range here. They're not following these lures right the way in. You kind of got to employ slightly different tactics as well, certainly be more quiet. You could go right the way down, you know, six, seven pound line here. And just with this minnow, as I was saying, it's, it is a wounded bait fish, so it's not going to be thrashed through the water. And the darker this, and the darker it gets out here, the slower I'm going to move these lures because the bait fish at night, I've looked at them and they are very slow, lethargic. They don't really move much, so just try and do that with the lures as well, as little as possible. That's why we try these little stick baits here. You don't need to do too much. This is a Savage Gear one. They all have, there's three different tails on it. They make a big thing out of the different tails, but it doesn't really matter. Little taps work quite well with this. Taps on the rod tip. Always a good time just before it gets dark. Give it a little tap here. I think the fish are right over that other side. I'm going to have to try to hit them right over there.
fishing into a little lagoon today and it's dead still. Um, it's so shallow that we can't even use shallow divers. But I am seeing some fish. <laughs> I took the middle hook off this, I just thought the action was better. Um, a big fish is going to engulf that anyway, but contrary to my theory we did just miss a fish. But I have just missed the fish so we're going to change that to a pachinko. So there's three types of pachinko here, this is the pop chinko, the 140, uh, then we've got this 120 is it, pop chinko, and then the mini one, but we'll put this small one on first. Um, I just want to see if I can get better distance and I think I can reach those rocks with this. They're just sitting there over on that reef I think. Cover the line a bit. You notice when I cast, I sort of cover the line a little bit. Um, stops that overrun. So we're just gonna. It's digging in now, so I think it's got some weed on it. If you can try and keep the line off the surface, I always think that's better. And no follows there. Let's try thrashing it through. Right, it's had its go. It's had its chance. And we're now gonna go for the slightly bigger one. So we know it's going to be able to cast far enough. Let's work this a little bit. Sometimes I'll just leave it. Sometimes a fish will investigate and I'm still seeing fish coming along in that shallow in that shallow water. Varying the speed of retrieve. Occasionally I'll tap that rod tip. Yeah, there are fish following it, but they're very small, I think. And we'll give it a few more casts and then we'll try the other one. Yeah, so that one there turned away at the last minute. Always frustrating. Let's see if we can give it another go, see if we can come back. <laughs> I'll pull it out of there, it's a good spot. Yeah, right past that rock. fish in here for sure. Well Mr Pachenko you've had your chance back on the pop chinko. 
although I recommend those mini lure clips from Breakaway. Uh, they don't fit this Pop Chinko very well. I'm so pleased to connect with those bass. But you always want more, don't you? <laughs> uh, we're gonna go back to a, a shallow diver here. The tide's starting to flood. And uh, although we're losing the light, I'm just gonna keep walking and casting, walking and casting. Uh, nothing on those surface lures, so back on this one. This is uh, Espetit, I think. So it's very shallow in the water. Feel it this is the benefit of braid really I can feel every little bump here and I think I'm in about six inches of water <laughs> no fish though So there is an opportunity to find a, a spot like this where you are on the coast. I've been using Google Earth Pro. It's really good for finding marks exactly like this. So you've got the tide, creates a big rock pool, and then all the water needs to funnel out of a small area between the reef. It can be absolutely golden. You can sort of almost ambush the fish as they come out. Uh, but yeah, using Google Earth Pro is a really good way of doing it. It's a free bit of software. And within it, there's a really uh, useful tool that will take you to when it's low tide and different times of the year and things like that. Just click on that and have a play around. Uh, and I'm, I can assure you, you'll find somewhere that could be really good and interesting to catch bass. So, so this uh, drift can flick out the smaller lures. Although those paddle tails are really good from Savage Gear as casters. Um, and as for the action, like a, as for the action, sort of slow. Obviously, fishing at night brings out all sorts of dangers. I'm not fishing alone tonight, which is helpful. My friend is camera shy. Um, but you do need a torchlight. Don't just don't shine it on the water. I've got my back to the sea. Lots of tiny prawns in there. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, there's another video there on the top left that might be of interest, similar to this one. Uh, if you want to really dig a bit deeper into Google Earth, then have a look at the one on the bottom left.